He was the first to jailbreak an iPhone. He hacked into both Sony and Google, then made a song about it. He created his own car company to compete with Tesla and even joined forces with Tesla CEO, Elon Musk. He's a man who dared to take on the biggest names in tech, a true innovator, a rebel, and the most interesting man in the world. So sit back, buckle up, and join me on a journey through the life of one of the most remarkable tech geniuses of our time, George Hotz. On October 2nd, the year 1989, the tech-savvy baby was born in Glenrock, New Jersey. He attended the prestigious Bergen County Academies, where he honed his skills in the field of IT technology. The curriculum at these academies is like Harvard Junior, but on steroids, so just getting into the academy is pretty impressive. Not as impressive as being a finalist at the 2004 and 5 ISEF competition in Portland, Oregon, which landed him interviews on The Today Show and Larry King. But it was in August 2007, at the ripe age of 17, that George became the first person to successfully unlock an iPhone. All right, our next guest is getting quite a bit of attention this afternoon. George Hotz of Glenrock, New Jersey, joins us now. With that came fame, the soon-to-be fortune, and of course, the hate. It's important to note that hacking is often a group effort. Information from all over the world is shared in online communities such as IRC chat rooms. So most people believe this is where and how George learned how to hack an iPhone, but they also say he didn't share his findings with others, giving him the nickname of Ego Hots. But at the end of this video, we'll see why that almost sounds insane. But you know, I did it with a technique that some guy, oh man, he's still on Twitter 20 years later, bro, you stole my technique. I'm like, what do you mean stole? He went on to win more competitions, scholarships, and make life-changing technology. So whether or not this is true, it seems like unlocking the iPhone was his crowning achievement, which not only cemented his place in history, but set the stage for his future endeavors. This is where the story of George Hotz truly begin and is one that will be remembered for years to come for the better or the worse exhibit this in the courtroom go on do it i dare you so back in december 2009 george decided he wanted to hack the playstation 3 and less than a month later he did it he gained full access to the cpu of the ps3 which he then released to the public sony obviously wasn't happy about this and in march 2010 they announced that they would release a firmware update to remove this feature from all models of the ps3 silly sony in december 2010 exactly one year later a group of hackers called fail overflow found out that sony made a mistake by using a key without public Publishing the private key. George posted a copy of the private key on his website. That way, everyone could jailbreak their PlayStation and play their favorite Mario games for free. Again, Sony wasn't excited as the rest of us. So in January 2011, they sued George and the members of Fail Overflow for breaking copyright laws, computer fraud, infringement, and five other words that implied they were suing them. Sony wanted to send a message that if others published details of their security flaws, even in the future, they would sue them. And less than a month later, in true George Hot's fashion, Fashion. He posted a one minute diss track against Sony on YouTube. Yo, it's Geohide. And for those that don't know, I'm getting sued by Sony. Let's we'll take us out of the courtroom and into the streets. I'm a beast at the least you'll face me in the Northeast. Uh, get my ire up, light my fire. I'll go harder than Eminem when at my right. And if you thought that was bad, the next week he started a blog about the Sony lawsuit. Eventually, George and Sony settled out of court and George agreed not to hack Sony products ever again. Emphasis on Sony, because that didn't stop him from hacking into Google. Project Zero. And Google says the group will aim to protect users from what are known as zero-day vulnerabilities, hence the name. The team thus far consists of a star-studded international roster, at, at least in the cybersecurity world. First up is George Hotz, or Geo Hot. Created in 2014 by Google, Project Zero is a group of top security researchers who are on a mission to find and fix the most dangerous security flaws in software. But in order to do that, Google had to make sure their own security was top notch because that would just be a bad look. So they rewarded George $150,000 for helping fix the flaws he found in their system. Google, unlike Sony, saw the value of having someone like George on their team. Two months later, Chris Evans, a Google security engineer, followed up via email 
out with an offer. Google pretty much recruited the hacking dream team, but if you ask me, it's pretty ironic that the king of hackers joined a team of nerdy thugs to make the internet safer for everyone. I feel like it's fair to ask, did he really join for that reason? I think so. Otherwise, he wouldn't have turned down an offer from Elon Musk. George and Elon have a long history with seems to be a love-hate relationship. Apparently, he met Elon Musk a few years ago and they talked about artificial intelligence. Nowadays, that's just a regular Tuesday. But at the time, AI seemed like the thing in the distant future. Only a conversation for the true intellect. George claims that after this conversation, Elon offered him 12 million to help develop Tesla's autopilot software. But broke off talks because he felt that Elon kept changing the terms of the deal. George replied to his offer saying, I appreciate the offer, but like I've said, I'm not looking for a job, but I'll ping you when I cross mobile. Doesn't get more nerdy than that. Hi Elon Musk, tons of respect for what you do. The rockets are incredible. The cars are incredible. Um, and one day, if you want to buy our software, I'd be happy to sell it to you. I will charge you double. The two part ways in 2016, and it was around then that George set out to prove Musk wrong by founding Kama AI, a company focused on driver assist technologies. But Elon Musk wasn't his only enemy at the time. California National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, yeah, that was so long, made Hot's life extremely difficult due to the concerns about the safety of his product. A product that wasn't even for sale yet. And in true hacker fashion, George did exactly what we thought he would. Kama AI is a company solely focused on driver assist technologies dedicated to developing self-driving technology using machine learning algorithms. The company's goal is to make ghost riding, where a car drives itself accessible to everyone and to create safer, more efficient driving experiences, which sounds like a brilliant idea to me but probably not to Sony or the state of California. George built a working self-driving 2016 Acura and again posted a YouTube video demoing it on California's Interstate 280 freeway. Car is completely driving by itself. Here goes nothing, man. Jesus. <laughs> That is amazing, man. Which got him into some serious legal trouble. Turns out you can't just have anything on the road. Sorry, bro. <laughs> the state and federal regulators wanted more details, which led George and his team getting so fed up that they decided to cancel their first product, the Kama One. But instead of giving them the information, Hots posted his autonomous driving code, Open Pilot, online for free so anyone can use it. He pretty much said, you might be able to stop me, but you can't stop us all. Since then, Kama AI has been focused on developing and improving Open Pilot, and they've made significant strides as they're now to Kama 3. Kama AI and Open Pilot are a great example of how a company can pivot and change direction when faced with obstacles. But changing direction is something that George is very familiar with, as he resigned as the CEO of Kama, and in a recent blog post, he mentioned that if Kama succeeds, it really was never me. In his latest project, George once again teamed up with Elon Musk, but this time, he was tasked with fixing Twitter search in 10 weeks. However, he stated that it was easier to build Twitter features outside of the platform rather than inside the company. And in the most Elon Musk type move, he made a poll on Twitter about whether he should or should not resign from Twitter. Despite the majority voting no, the next day, he made the shocking announcement that he was stepping down, stating that he felt he couldn't make a real impact at the company. So I guess there is no point in voting. But it's just another chapter in the wild life of George Hot. From unlocking an iPhone to creating his own autonomous driving company, George has been on a wild ride and also has taken us on a wild ride. So whether he's making history or making headlines, George is always pushing the boundaries of what's possible. And of course, I don't agree with everything he says or stands by. I have to admire his determination and willingness just to take risks. He showed us that you can make a difference in the world just by dreaming bigger, embracing change, and investing in AI technology.